going to tell you exactly how you can make more money online and it's going to blow your mind off. Just give me the real game. And first of all, before I get into that, Glenda, 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 how do you really, 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 really make money online? How in the hell do you expect somebody to come and give you something when you have all these stipulations, requirements, and trials of Hades that they must do to help your ass when you're a nameless coward? Or I don't want to hear, and this is something else that I get from people. I don't want to hear about the inner game. I don't want to hear about some extra books. I don't need to hear about the, how to read the book. I just want you to tell me exactly how do I make money online. Good morning, good morning, AM Hustle. Yes, I'm a little hyped. I don't sleep much. It's natural. I got this email. It was like, Glendon, how do you make money online? Making money online. You need to fuck up more. Now, maybe like, hey, whoa, 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 Glendon, no, 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 I don't want to hear that. I'm trying not to fuck up. I'm already fucking up. No, no, you're not fucking up enough. You're not fucking up enough. You're not even close to the massive level of fucking up you need to be. And this is why. When you fuck up, you learn more, faster. The lessons are more critical. They stick. You don't have to take that class. It's like the harder to fuck up unless you are just a test tube, baby. You don't have to take that class again. There's no remedial. It's just like, this is how this works. This is how it felt. Fuck that. I'm not going back there again. Case in point. When I went into a forum and I didn't understand about the internet pylon, because typically trolls hang out together, or sometimes you'll go into a place and then everyone's going to jump on you because you are the troll. Well, I went in there and I'm like this, I'll fight the world type dude. And then I realized all of that energy that went into that, I could have wrote a blog post. I could have did a video. I could have did something where that energy would have been invested into this one thing, one time that would have made money over and over and over and over and over versus just going in there and shooting out my intellectual bullets and just shooting at the walls or shooting at ghosts with no effect, with no, with no permanent results. It was just you become depleted. You hit that situation of being depleted. You hit that situation of... This thing is pointless. Another area where I fucked up massively, look, my first book, there was so many fuck ups. I can't even count how many fuck ups. It was just like, it wasn't even eggs in the carton. It was like, you go to the egg section and there's all of these cartons. That was the level of fuckativity that happened. And it was one of the best things I ever did. Fuck up number one. I took my book to an editor who was supposed to do it. I didn't know that she was looking to make a little extra change without doing something strange. I didn't know that. She wanted, she's like, hey, uh, I thought you, you know, it was better put together, but boo, boo, let me handle this. You just promote and stuff and I'll handle this and let me rewrite this for you. Now, the fuck up there wasn't that I, I didn't go for that. The, the fuck up was I didn't go for a second opinion. I was so morally devastated because when you work on something for months and someone's like, your Kung Fu stinks. You feel a little, you feel some kind of way about yourself. It's very easy to become demoralized. It's very easy to be devastated. It's very easy to give up. So I didn't get the second opinion because I knew where I was mentally. I was at that point where I had put all this work. I had switched from writing a relationship book that I was like, you know what? I am going to push this out just as it is, as hard and as fast as I can. So through the fuck up of going to her versus someone else, I learned things that I would have not learned if I went to the right editor who did the book, who did it right. I would have missed 10 lessons that still make me money today. So it was a fuck up. There were people like, I oh, hear the book. There's typos. <laughs> there's typos. There's typos. All of that stuff going on. And some people still do it. And the, I've got haters who come on the channel and they still talk about that stuff. But due to my fuck ups, where I was once here, 
I'm now here. And my haters are still talking about stuff here because that's where they are. So it, it was a massive fuck up, but it was a beautiful fuck up. It was a great thing because I learned so much. It, it just was to push the the struggle is real as you make it. Now, if you're not fucking up, I'm going to tell you why, because you are a coward. And I'm not going to say you're a faceless coward. I'm going to just say you're a coward because you know what you don't know. And you know that entering into an arena with what you don't know, your blind spots and deficiencies will be exposed. And that's like, no, 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 we, we cannot talk about that. No, 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 no. So instead of challenging your blind spots and deficiencies, because uh, I love Gary V, where his thing is focus on your strengths and fuck everything else. I don't take that philosophy and it just it, that works for him and it may work for people like him. It may work for people in his tribe. So I'm not going to marginalize it. But if I took that advice, only thing that I would be doing is just talking videos, talking shit in videos, because I'm really good at talking shit in videos and there wouldn't be the online portals. I'm not, I don't have one educational online portal. I have two. There, there wouldn't be, oh, there's a podcast coming. And I don't know if it's going to be the American Hustler podcast or it's going to be Kung Fu Hustle podcast, but that's coming. There wouldn't be all of these books. There wouldn't be the opportunity. There are so many things that if I did not work on my blind spots and deficiencies would have not happened. So don't run from that. Yeah, double down on your strengths, knock it out, knock it out, but still work on your blind spots and deficiencies. Do not just like, well, fuck that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to handle that. I'm going to let someone else do that. Because one of the things about being an entrepreneur in the beginning is you wear many hats. And as you scale, you get this, you get this. I hire you to do this. But when you talk to seasoned, really seasoned entrepreneurs who have been through the fire, that when their company experienced some type of upheaval or something bad happened, that they could fix it because they knew how the company worked because they built the shit. They knew all of the jobs. You, you've, you've seen this manager or this CEO who's clueless to how this department operates. And people are like, well, he's CEO. He just handles this. We are in this economy of age where the small business can look like a big business and make money like a big business. But everybody in that small business needs to know how that shit works. Went to recently to the BMW factory in Greenville, South Carolina. This is how they run that. Now, this is smart management. Everyone in that factory knows how to do four jobs. They work 10 hour shifts and they change positions every, you know, they change positions three, four times a shift. And when new equipment comes in, everyone is retrained or trained on that equipment. So when you look at it like that way, they're keeping it cohesive, they're keeping it real, and they're keeping it profitable. This whole thing, I'm going to specialize, it's cool and it's great, but I'm going to tell you, those who can do a lot of different things, okay to good to possibly well, are going to kill people in the future who can do one thing really well. Because what do we know about the future? Shit changes. And if one, you can only do one thing when that big shift happens, you are fucked. Uh, there, this, recently, there was some shit that went down in the Facebook group, and I just said, fuck it, I left. I am the guy that will say, Amazon is going to fuck you. And not because Amazon has said, you are the one. No, Amazon uses writers as bait. Amazon doesn't care if writers make money. Amazon want as many products to get people to come to that site to go ahead and sign up to create an account and books are a very cheap way to get people into the Amazon ecosystem. Then once you're there, because look at if you bought books on Amazon, you bought other items on Amazon. If you bought a television on Amazon, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe you have went over to Audible, which is an Amazon company. All of this stuff keeps you in their ecosystem. And there's so many purchase points in their ecosystem. It's not about boosting up writers. How do I know this? Because I started a business. I know how the game goes. I know how this stuff works. And people are like, you, no, you're wrong. And 
like 2010, I predicted with stunning accuracy that Amazon was going to figure a way to lower riders income. And everyone's like, they're not going to do it. There are all these other platforms and iTunes offering 70%. There's just no way the competition. Okay. In 2010, Amazon had no con real competition in terms of book sales. In 2015, Amazon has no real competition in terms of book sales. So when you are the main pimp and you own the strip, you get the choice hose. And Amazon has got the choice hose. And if they want to have a discount, or it's like, you know, uh, Big Lip Sally, yeah, yeah, you know, she's normally 500 bucks an hour. Well, you know what? This weekend, she's 100. And they're going to work the shit out of Big Lip Sally. Oh, you know, Stanky Leg Susan? Mm, you like her? She was a thousand an hour. Today she's $59.99. This is what they do. <laughs> Whenever you sign up and there's all of this mice type, and it's called terms of service, and you just scroll through and it's just like goes on and on and on. In the terms of service are all those things that allow them to do the things that they want to do in the future because they know how you are going to respond. Not read that shit and annotate it. That's why it's online. That's why it checks box. You notice you have the option to print it up if you want to. You know why? If you print it up, you could print it up annotate it and say, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with this, I don't agree with this, sign it, send it to them. If they accept it, then they're going to have to honor your annotated terms. I'll tell you a story when I was doing a deal with this guy who was mercurial. He's a mercurial bastard. He's the type of guy that if you're bleeding and if he could push up on a point that's a little higher than the wound to get a little more blood out just to hurt you a little bit more, he's that dude. And we're doing this thing and we had the contract, right? So we're sliding the contract across the table because I'm making terms and he's making terms. And every time I make a term, he would go lower. Then he would go lower. And I said, oh, I know how to deal with you. Because see, this is what I knew. He needed me. He did not know that I knew that he needed me. So I just like did this. Sun Tzu, the art of war. <sighs> you know, man, I'm really tired of this. I'm tired of this. Uh, I can't take it no more, right? So I'm, I'm giving all of this shoulders in. I'm purposely doing this. Thank you, Tony Robbins. Shoulders in. All these signs of defeat. And he just smiles. And he relaxes. He leans back in his chair. He's just like, I got this little rabbit where I want him. Then I took it and I wrote down the biggest number I can think of that was plausible for the concept and said, there it is. I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be back. So that's called a pattern interrupt. I didn't know it at the time. I just did it because, you know, it was a son to him. And when I came back, he was just like this. Uh, he was because the thing is, we had got into a rhythm. I would like do some slide. He, and I broke the rhythm and he was caught up in the rhythm and I intentionally disrupted the rhythm. And he, he just couldn't deal with it. He was just. He's like, you know, we can't do that. And then I didn't even sit back at the table. I said, I'll just put my jacket on. I said, okay, well, hey, I'll stay in my hand. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, the thing is, I didn't need him. I had another person that I wanted to work with, and it was going to be a conflict if I took both of the projects. And since he was a mercurial bastard, I pushed him, pushed him. Now, this was a fuck up. This was a fuck up. Because, you know, one of my friends is like, dude, that's good money. You know they got the money. You know, this other one is a little shaky. But I was like, I like these. I like shaky. Shaky's working for me. Then maybe two weeks later, he calls me up and said, okay, two weeks. And then he calls me like four days before the shit's supposed to jump off. And I had already did the other job. So fucking up can make you a lot of money if you can deal with the short-term embarrassment or the re repercussions. Uh, th there's just many, many things that you can bring to the table by fucking up. Now, fucking up takes courage. You know, the F in fucking up for most of you is fear. It's like, ooh. I mean, I don't know how many people get shook by someone who has no experience in starting a business, someone who is broke, or then a mouse in the desert, and they'll just go, are you sure about that? That's it, that's it. Then, and you'd be like, yeah, I'm sure. Then you get home, and you're like this. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. 
Maybe this isn't for me. Hmm. And then if that person is someone who's engaged in a psychological loop of bringing you down, such as a parent, a grandparent, a husband, a wife, a sibling, someone who knows where your tender underbelly is, and they just shake, 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 shake for fun. Very few people want to see you do well. And it gets to be interesting when you when you discover that because you'll have some people who are in your team and you can feel the love. You just like, oh, this feels nice. This feels really nice. Then there are other people you've never felt the love. They will tell you that you're lucky. They'll tell you that, well, you know, it wasn't you, it was them. It was environmental causes or you get it, so many things to marginalize your shine because they have no shine of their own. Now, I'm going to give you a process of how I intentionally fuck up. And I'm going to tell you some stuff that I do. I got people here on this channel who are mad at me. I got people who love me. And I got people who are just like, what the fuck is he going to do next? I test out a lot of things because I have a 25% success rate. So knowing that if I want to have more successes in that, say that, success rate of 25 percent is static it never changes in my life so for every 100 things that i do 25 are winners right well if i want 50 winners i gotta do 200 things if i want 100 winners i gotta do 400 things that's why i do what i do because you know people's like hey i want this course and i'll, I'll just tell you boo you're the only one out of a few thousand that wanted that course there's not a proper allocation of resources energy or time and that's why when I say, hey, if you want that, you want a personal consult. I have someone that went back and forth with me. It's like, well, you should do the course. You should advertise. You should do this. And I was just like, you should get off your ass and make that shit happen because you want me to care more about your janky problem than you do. Because this, this is a sign that someone doesn't give a damn about their problem. It persists for years. They get mad at other people because they don't. other people don't really consider that their problem is is paramount as they do. I'll give you a real big one because on my personal page, I'm all about fuckery now. Lots of fuckery on my personal page. And I put up this thing about there were more white slaves than black, which you know, boom, set it off. People are like, oh, how dare you even put that up? How dare you even suggest that? You're making all these assumptions. I mean, it was just all weekend long. I was just sitting back like this, chewing my popcorn. And I would just go in and stir the pot with like a simple statement. Look, I would like some solutions. The time is 1.33. Please provide solutions. Then back out and eat my popcorn and watch. <laughs> I mean, it was just like, damn. I felt like Geppetto and I had fucking Pokios, Pokino, Pinocchios all over the place. It's like, I, I was just like, damn, I need more hands to move all these puppets. Then it, it's the thing is, when, like, let's just talk about slavery. Slavery was one of the most horrible, horrific, tragic events in history. It is a stain upon humanity. Now, with that said, what are you doing to get beyond that? Because that's not something I think you should get over. But what are you doing? Because let's go with the vestiges of slavery and the repercussions of the day. What are you doing to get past that? and to improve the situation. Because one of my biggest pet peeves is bitching and whining, bitching and whining. And some people have a button that's just like, bitch, 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 bitch. Whine, whine. I mean, they just, oh, and that's the thing. I was poking those buttons and now this one dude, he was just like, well, you know, uh, I got called a coon and a tum. And then I, the, the shit was just funny. And then when I just said, okay, because. I'm going to hit you with a logical response to see what you will do. And I, I just gently, uh, look, where are the solutions, gentlemen? Where are the solutions, gentlemen? Where are the solutions, gentlemen? And I asked that question not once, not twice, four times over a period of hours. Not one damn solution. Now, I understand if you are hurt, because like I said, I have a personal situation that I bitch and whine about. But the action, like the bitch and whine is about 10%, and the action level is 90%. That 90% is going to make this problem go away. But if the bitching and whining was 90% and 
and the, the action was 10%, that problem was going to remain perpetual. It was just forever going to be in my life. And you, you hear this stuff, and it's just like, oh, yeah, you know, we got to do something. And white people, and interestingly enough, there was a lot of white people on my page who got in the conversation. So you had black people and white people talking about racism and slavery from a very real place. Because, you know, I was chewing my popcorn. And I was like, and then that happened. Ooh, and they kept at it. And I was like, now that's going to promote change. And that's going to promote people looking at things differently. As long as you're like, well, there's no slavery. Or if you're black, oh, all white people are fucked up, which are both untrue. And you get people in this situation where they're just going on and on and on, and they don't slow down and say, look, let me talk to this person, I think, who has this idea. And a lot of times when they talk to these people, it's like, they don't even think like that. Now, I understand that I'm in a rare position because I'm an owner. I get to hire people. I get to see things that the average person doesn't get. I totally get that. And sometimes I try to use that knowledge to put things out there to create these conversations because these conversations need to be had. Now, another thing that I put, and for all these hotep Negroes, yes, I said the word Negro, hotep Negroes, hotep um, men, uh, the community men, the community organizers, I see these guys, they come in, and this is one of their biggest deficiencies. Their passion for improving the community is remarkable, it's beautiful, it's admirable. That's not the problem. Their problem is the methodology and the construct that they're trying to use. And it's the, what I call the beg, the beg, shame, wine method. I'm going to beg for it. If I don't get it, I'm going to shame for you, shame you. And if the shame doesn't work, I'm going to whine. Now, let's just put this in the context that we can all understand. So you are dating someone. You're a male, you're dating a female. If you're a female, you're dating a male. And that male or female that you're dating is always begging, shaming, whining. What do you do with them? At some point, you eject them out of your life. So how can you use those tactics on larger issues and also expect people to be ingratiate themselves to you? It's not going to happen. And also, the big thing, and if you haven't heard of him, check out Dr. Claude Anderson. I fully embrace what he says, which is, there's this 5-4 building, right? What's, you know the foundation? Economics. That's the foundation. Economics. You cannot build the rest of the building without economics. But when you talk to these hotel folks and those other folks who are now starting to come to me, who are starting to email me, who are starting to find me on Facebook, hey, you should do this. Hey, you should like give I'm like, you're really generous spending my intellectual property. You're really generous with that. And that's that whole big shame why I'm tactic. Now, see, first of all, I don't believe in karma. You know, a lot of people, a lot of our friends are like, how can you not believe in karma? I said, well, realistically, if karma was a true construct in the world based upon all of the atrocities of slavery, there'd be very few white people in the world. Karma is not here. Karma is not here. It just is, isn't. Like the babies who are raped and then the rapist goes on and has a normal life. There's no karma. Karma is just a way that people make themselves feel better because they didn't take action to extract satisfaction from someone or something doing them wrong. That's all it is, in my opinion. Now, there may karma may work in your life. I'm one that believes in spiritual law. And this is something else. I also believe in there's a lot of things that we can't explain. Now, I know this is going to scare a lot of black folks, but what if there's more than one God? I, well, I know, I know, I know, I know. See, what if every religion that the God that they pray to is real? What if there's several of them? Now, I just lost a lot of black folks. It's like, oh, Lord, Jesus, pray for Jesus in Jesus name. Can we get him back? Because he's off. Of the, the he's off the event he's off the, he's off the plantation he we can we get Jesus G, in Jesus name in the blood I don't I know some of you already praying for me like that for saying that but I don't know if it's true and I don't know if it's not true I've pondered it since I was eleven could be true may not be true may be a fallacy I may be way off but what if that was true that would explain a lot of shit it really would but when you have that intellectual curiosity. And when you're not afraid of fucking up, because for a lot of folks, 
I can tell you, there's a lot of folks who are going to get to this point in the video, and they're like, uh uh, I'm getting off this channel. The devil is a lie. The devil is, woo And you know, you got, you know, Catholics. <laughs> For me even to dare to say such a thing. Oh, oh, it's so horrible. But think about that. Like I said, just me, the things I've seen in my pursuits. I used to read a lot about history as a kid. I used to, the Crusades, Martin Luther, the 99s on the door. I used to read about that stuff. And it just hit me time and time again that the brutality of humanity has been deep from day one. From when that first caveman saw Ugg and went with that rock and took his bitch, it's been on. It's been on. But that's how you make money. Fuck up more. Many companies went out to invent one thing, and it didn't work out, but the failure actually turned into a profitable thing. I don't know. I know I read a long time ago, but I'm not really clear. But you know the microwave? You know where that came from? The, the space program. Velcro space program. I don't know if they were fuck ups or direct uh, line products inventions, but frequently, oh, my company, I wanted just to be a rider. I didn't expect to be riding all this. I thought I was going to get on a little bicycle. I got my little rider bicycle. I'm riding. Hey, I'm a rider. I'm a rider. Now it's like, oh, there's all this other stuff. And then when I go out in public and then I'm beginning to know that look when they're like, And they keep looking at me because they're like, I know him, but they can't figure it out. And they usually figure it out when I'm gone. And they're like, that's who that is. <laughs> it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Now, let's go through how you should fuck up in a controlled environment. Yes, you can. It's, it's called controlled risk. It's calculated risk. Big companies do this shit all the time. Number one, line out what's the worst absolute thing that can happen. Let's say... You up with Miss May May, right? You you do working with Miss May May, and you know that you start a business with Miss May May, who may be your wife here, who, who she's just gonna be Carlton. I want you to understand I got love for you. Jesus has told me to love you, and Carlton, that's not for you. You got a good job down there at the plant. They're gonna make you a supervisor, they like you. You just gotta keep your nose clean and go to work. What do you want to start a business for? What do you want to start a business for? You you know, and once they hear you start a business, they're going to think you're uppity. They're going to think that you're trying to, you're going to mess up a good thing, Carlton. I love you. And she got your hand. She, she's holding you. And she's like, let's pray. Let's pray on this. Now, all of that is steeped in fear. God ain't have nothing to do with that. That's all about fear. You got that situation. So what, the fact that you're even pondering and doing something, that's a fuck up in the scope of the family. That's a fuck up. It's like, not you. You shouldn't be doing that. This is how you handle it. When you're going to do this stuff, do not tell anybody what you're doing. Only when you have appreciable results do you even bring it up. And then, then if they, it's like they see that you're doing something, it's like, so Carl, what are you doing? Lie. I'm telling you, lie. It's like, oh, nothing. Don't get into it because negative energy is drawn to positive energy. And what? And if you understand science, the negative energy will try to overtake the positive energy and the positive energy will try to overtake the negative energy. So whoever has a bigger power source is going to win. And you got Aunt Mamie, you got Uncle Bob, you got Sylvester, all of them are that negative power source. And there's you with your one light of, of inspiration. You're trying to shine. Your light's flickering. You're like, I'm trying to shine. I'm trying to shine. And they're over there like Darth Vader in the dark side, like, no, you will not shine. You will be dark. You will be lugubrious. You will not shine, you little bitch. And, and that's what happens. It, it's Sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's not intentional. So number one, you are going on the project. Do not tell people. I'm telling you, lie to them. Keep it's called misdirection, subterfuge, duplicity. Keep those motherfuckers in the dark because the less they know, the less that they can turn on the dark side and start to dampen your shine. That's what they're going to do. They want to dampen it because every time that you hit a shine point, you make them realize 
what they gave up on. I didn't realize until recently why some people were treating me so because like I talk a lot of shit on here on YouTube, but in my normal, regular life, I don't really fuck with people because I spend a great deal of time alone and I'm very careful to the people who come in my circle. If you're going to bring janky energy in my circle, at some point, the R2-D3 or the T4 security robots are going to come out and they're like, you need to leave. You got to go. You got to go. We're going to ex escort you out because this piece, this circle, the serene, I love it. And it's nice. But you, you have to keep them out. Now, the second thing about fucking up, this is a common, common, common problem. Hey, Glendon, I want to make some money. I don't know what to do. You got to pick 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 things and just start doing shit. Just, well, no, this doesn't like uh, this. No, I don't like it. Ooh, this makes my nipples hard. Okay, this is in the key pile. You, you got to do that. And that's going to be fucking up. And let's have this conversation about wasting time. If you've learned something new that you can use in the future, you have not wasted time. Because my whole childhood was a waste of time based upon the way that many of you think. I spent hours in the library reading books that just for the simple curiosity of I never read that book. There was this one book that was talking about guns and they had all these pictures of how the gun was dealt. That's how I know who developed gun power. White people were talking about white men developed everything. No, the fuck you didn't. <laughs> the fuck you didn't. And for those who read and know about history, you know, when you hear that stuff, you're like, like that guy in the men in black and no, and Independence Day. Uh, sir, that's not entirely true. I mean, that is the whole thing. And that's why you have to educate yourself and go through experiences and meet different people and do all this other stuff versus being in that static. Well, I'm going to stay here. This is really good because it's safe, bitch. As long as you are a safe, bitch, you're never going to be a rich, bitch. Understand that safe money don't like safe money. Like well, that's boring over there. Mm, yeah. Money like, woo, that motherfucker's exciting. <laughs> I don't know what it's about, it, but I got to get over there. Ooh, my nipples are hard. I mean, seriously, you, you got to try this stuff. You got to really put forth stuff. You, you got to understand that experiences gained, whether they give you money now or in the future, are important and valuable. I, a lot of the stuff that I talk about to you, I learned this shit probably before 16. Because I, I mean, all right, here's the, here's the deal. I had like this G.I. Joe rucksack book pack. I would literally go to the library on Monday, get four, six, seven, as many books would fit in there, read some books in the library, go home, read books all night, go back the next day, take the ones that I had read back, get some other books and go home. And I repeated this process. Uh, one of the libraries, the librarians at the Annsville Library, she told me, she said, you have read more books in this library than anyone else. And I said, you sure about this? She said, I have checked the records. You've read substantially. And I was a kid. And I was like, I feel special. I'm a reader. And, you know, and I tell people, that, I was like, nerdy motherfucker. Smarty art mother. And that, that's another thing. We have people who discourage or, you know, just denigrate intellectual curiosity. But it's those who are intellectually curious, employ your stupid ass. Have you made that connection? Time and time again, <laughs> it is that guy who his name is on the front of the check and your name is endorsed on the back. Have you ever thought about that construct? So I don't consider myself to be the smartest person in the world. I consider myself uh, pretty average in intelligence, but I'm above average in execution because that's what gets me over. Because I'll fuck up in the heartbeat and I know it's like, oh, this is going to go bad. <laughs> It's going to go real bad. Okay, how do we fix it? And then those fix it moments is where I get smarter because I learned things that I did not know before. That's why I can sit here and talk for hours about all this stuff because I cram and I mean, I got a shovel just dumping information in, dumping the information in. Then I go out and I apply the information. It's like, take that out because it doesn't work. Take that out because it doesn't work. So it's like information in, then there's the grooming and the verification of the information. And that's that process. It's an ever going process. Uh, my girl, she looks at me, she's like, she told me, not this weekend, last weekend, she said, 
you don't understand. People just can't do what you do. And I was like, what are you talking about? Because I just see myself as regular old peoples. I see myself as, you know, just a kid that had a lot of dreams that actually stole some copper pipe from a construction site and took a two by piece of two by four and fashioned my own Thor hammer. Because if you didn't know, I named my car Thor. When I was a kid, I had a fucking cape and this copper pipe hammer, and I used to run around the neighborhood talking about I am the thunder god. Now, fortunately, most folks were so ignorant in my neighborhood, no one had the, the nerve or the uh, intellect or the ability to say, hey, boy, Thor wasn't black. You know that. Right? No, I didn't get that because they didn't know. <laughs> I didn't get those. So I'm running around like, shh, boom, shh. <laughs> I was doing this, and Miss Jones saw me one day, and she said, come here. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I feel, I'm having fun. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't know what to do with me. And that was just come from reading and putting all that stuff in because, you know, there is a parallel between the Greek gods and the Roman gods. And for all the hotel folks who are going to come in and say, you know about them white gods, but I don't know nothing about the black folks. And I'm going to say, why is the Louis Empire, motherfucker? Tory motherfucker. And go Google it because you don't know. Because And this is another thing. And I'm going to break black. Then I'm going to go back to neutral in a minute. I My history is not slavery. My history is now part of what, you know, slavery is part of it because uh, ancestors went through that shit. And is now slavery and before slavery. You know the time before slavery is actually greater than the slave period? All of those thousand years of culture were greater than slave time. Slave time was huge. It was 400 years. It was tragic and horrible. But there was more history of black folks before slavery. And for some people, a lot of these old town people, that's the only place. I'm like, well, the white man. I cannot get what I want because of the white man that's keeping me down. The white man. He's keeping me down. And if you go to Wasilu Empire, when he kicked literally kicked the white man out of Africa and then started trading with white man and bought guns. And when you, when you look at all of the beautiful rich history that goes before slavery, you have a greater appreciation. And then you hear this thing about, cause I had this guy when I was doing Uber, it was so funny. And he's like, so where are you from? And I said, Alabama. He said, and he was drunk. He's like, no, you from Africa. I was like, no motherfucker. I'm from Alabama. And he's like, no, your people. And then all of a sudden, everybody wants to tell you who your people are, where you are, what you should do, how you should feel, a lost culture. Okay, I'm 48 years old. I'm 49 years old. I grew up in Adamsville, Alabama. I traveled around the world, lived in Japan, did all this stuff. And my history in my life has been defined by those events. It has not been defined by things that I did not experience. I wasn't a slave. No one I know was a slave. My grandmother wasn't a slave. Now, maybe her grandmother was, or her grandfather, maybe, possibly. So they've got that greater connection. But for all of us who are not 130, we have no physical connection to that. And you have people walking around like, yeah, you know what they did to us? No, what they did to your ancestors. They ain't done shit to you. And you're gonna steep yourself in that stuff, and then with the what I call the what we fuck black people syndrome. Hold on, there might be a sneeze, there might be some snot on the screen. Hold on, hold on, hold on. okay, no, it's past. But when you study the richness of mathematics and how schools and how a lot of things are, you know, and just to even break real with slavery, you know, why a lot of slaves were captured. Because they're valuable. They knew agriculture. They knew metal. They took them because they could do shit. They didn't just like, ooh, he just a jungle boy in the bush picking up dirt. No, they had skills. <laughs> That's why they were taken. So when you look at that thing, it's a bigger appreciation because I look at the 2,000 years of humanity and the 2,000 years of contribution by, you know, people who look like me or we want to say Moors, you know, once people started standing up after they crawled out of the caves and you know even with that here's a theory for you once again people gonna go what if there was one group of people on this continent and this continent and this continent and when the kind of little plates shift you know because everything used to be together everything used to be together and then they, the plates just kind of shifted apart what if there was just like four or five tribes 
There was some Moors who were dark. There was like some Norse people who were blonde and blue eyed. There was Asian people. And, and they were just people and they traded together. Then the tectonic plates split apart. Then people forgot who the fuck they were. Then all of a sudden, because racism is not a construct that became, a uh, race was not a construct that came into place until slavery. There was no such construct construct of race. It was just, if you were a Moor or you were a Spaniard, you were, that, that was it. There was none of this race stuff like it is now. Now, here's another thing. I, I had this experience. I used to, I was stationed in Schofield Barracks in Hawaii, and they have this wonderful culture center. It's called the Polynesian Culture Center. And I went with Lisa Loray because she was sexy as fuck. I was like, you ever get a girl and you're like, I got her? Yeah, it was like on that move. And we were there, and I learned that New Zealand is part of Polynesia. And I ran into a New Zealander years later, and I was like, yeah, and she did not know that I knew that. Because I was like, yeah, the Maoris are part of it. And she's like, no, 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 no. I was like, no, uh, let me tell you. Look, you know, me trying to be educational, because I didn't know that she was trying to deflect because she didn't want to deal with it. I'm just trying to be overly friendly. I was like, no, no, no. I was at the Polynesian Culture Center, and they explained it, and they laid it out. And then she's that was a long time ago. And she walked off because she didn't want to deal with it. Uh, <laughs> it's just when you study history, you find out a lot of beautiful things. A lot of beautiful things. So for me, my history isn't just 400 years slavery. I'm fucked. My history is 2,000 years. And, you know, if you subtract 400 from 2,000, that's a lot of years of freedom. We were free more than we were enslaved. But for some people, their mind is enslaved in the concept that cannot handle that because that means that they would have to re examine some of the bullshit they've been doing, which is really the reason for their failure versus the white man for real for real, for real true story true story true story so these are a whole of the a lot of the things that you can do to build yourself up fuck up more seriously i glendon cameron tell you fuck up more go out here's a good thing it's not really a fuck up but this is really interesting when you do it walk into a restaurant and you see a group of people and just go over and start talking to them about anything it's amazing how many times i've done that shit and they're just like Hey, he's in. <laughs> then there's times you go and they're just like, who the fuck are you? Go away. Now go away. They don't say that, but you hear the vibe. But just be curious. Be out, go out there and do stuff because anything that you do and build is going to happen through people. And the sooner that you know how to deal with people and on different levels, you're better off knowing how to deal with 20 levels of people versus only knowing how to deal with five levels. Because when you encounter someone in those other levels and you cannot communicate with them, they are not at the disadvantage. You are. True story. True story. So fuck up more. Seriously. It works for me. It's a lot of fun. You, you, you get entertainment from this channel. I know you do. I know you do. You do. You get entertainment because we keep it crispy and real here. Now, I'm about to do something that's about to be real fun. Oh, I am not, because, <laughs> hold on a second. I thought I was going to do something that was fun, but I realized that uh, I just did a crackhead move. It's kind of crazy. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. I'm going to give you something ah, that you're going to really, really enjoy, because, see, now that we're at the end of the video and only where the rough and real tend to come with the folks who are interested in special stuff. Someone asked me, was I going to do an affiliate program? And shh, this is a secret. Hold on a second. I am ready now. Okay. I can do an affiliate program with this website, with this platform. And I am going to do an affiliate program. And I'm going to tell you something. The only people who are going to be able to participate in the affiliate program are the people who buy that course. So if you come in as a founder, you'll be able to sell everything. If you wait until after the special is over, then you're going to have to buy all of the courses or you're going to have to buy the big package to be able to sell everything. See, there is a art and technique to this because I know how people operate. The folks who are coming in now, the early adapters, they're going to sell the shit out of this because they're taking the courses, we're talking, and they're going to learn. Then the folks who are going to like, oh, shit, that's a great opportunity, they're going to have to pay for it. So if you want to be an affiliate,
affiliate of Hustler Mindset Life Skills, get in now. I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm not saying I'm just letting you know what I'm going to do because I'm thinking the major package is going to be six, seven, eight hundred bucks. And then each course will be anywhere from 50 to three hundred dollars. And if you want to sell everything, you're going to have to buy everything. If you know you come in later, and it's like, hey, you buy three courses. You can be an affiliate of those three courses. And the reason that I am doing this is when I, I, I did a test with Gumroad, I sent out and you can be an affiliate. Guess who sold the most? The people who took the courses. They sold the most. The folks who didn't take the courses who just wanted to be affiliate and just, I want to get paid, man. I ain't sell shit. It's a lesson learned. So if you want to be an affiliate of Hustler Mindset Life Skills, you're going to have to get in and you want to go through the courses so you know what you're telling people. So when people are like, hey, why should I do this? It's like, well, when I took the course, do you know how strong of a selling point that is? When I took the course, when I experienced this, you're not selling, you are sharing. And I just decided and I understand I'm not going to get a lot of affiliates. Don't care. Don't care. So if you want to be part of that affiliate program, and I'm going to tell you, and not to just be overly optimistic, just I'm on the platform two weeks. Compared to everything else that I've done, this thing kind of scares me at how successful I think it would be. And I'm, I'm telling you, if you want to want to be an affiliate, you, and it's not going to be one of those. I'm not doing ClickBank. Uh, and once I get this thing up after the 26th, I'm going to hold sales meetings. I'm going to teach you how to sell it. But see, I'm not going to invest in you unless you invest in me by buying the courses. Because if you don't have enough confidence to buy the course to improve your life, I don't want you as a salesperson on my team. I just don't because you're not going to do a good job. I mean, there may be exceptions, but I'm going to go with the rule. I'm not going to go with the exception. I'm going to go that most of the people who bought the course, who later became affiliates, were the better salespeople. I'm betting on them because they betted on me. So you could literally take the course, like you can come in now on the founder special, and then once I start the affiliate program, get your money back plus some. That's why I made it. It's, it's ridiculously cheap. 150 bucks. It's ridiculously cheap for what you get. And people are just like, well, I want it lower. I want about fifty dollars because I'm comfortable with that. Fuck those people, just straight up. I don't want them in the. I don't want them taking the courses. I don't want them as an affiliate because they don't understand value. They're cheap as fuck mentally. They're cheap as fuck physically. They're cheap as fuck financially. That is not a person who's going to be an abundant salesperson. It's just not going to happen. Not. This just can't happen. So, below the video, annotations all over the place. Click one, get in, and once again, don't put this in the comments. Don't put it in the comments because what I'm going to do is about the 24th, I'm going to make this announcement live and watch motherfuckers scramble because I'm a curacle like that because they're just going to be like, oh, shit, I should have got in early. Hey, Big Mama, can I get some money? Hey, Sheila, 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 you got an extra 150. Sheila, it's going to be that. Trust me, it's going to be that. Oh, and one more thing. I'm going to move after the 26. I got a course that's on the main platform, the 24 hour startup. I'm going to move that to Hustle Mindset Life Skills, but I'm not putting it there now. I'm going to put it there after the 26. And it's going to be 150 alone. Yeah, I'm that dude. So if you like the information, and you should go below the video, check out what's there. There's a lot of cool stuff, wonderful stuff, free stuff, paid stuff that will help you have a better life and make more money and have more fun. And with that, I'll see you in the next session. You're a faceless fool. I mean, I get stuff like that all the time. I'm just like, really? You can't talk to strangers like that that you don't know thinking, well, they're going to help me out. I don't, I don't know what it is with some people. But it's just strange that I get those kind of emails. But I was in a really good mood. I was going to do another topic for AM Hustle, but we're going to jump into that.